Good afternoon and welcome to NYFP. Today I'm joined by Todd Schoenberger of Landcold Trading. Hi Todd, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Remy. Well, we're seeing another choppy trading session and the major averages are now higher. I wanted to start out by looking at the latest U.S. economic data. Now, we had PPI and retail sales coming in flat. And I do want to mention that non-farm payrolls for the latest month came in flat. So what are all these flat readings telling you? Listen, we are in for some dire times. That's all I'm going to tell you right now. Look, retail sales were flat, but the revision for July was even lower. So people are not spending anymore. The fragile economic states out there, people, the household balance sheet is decimated right now. People are not spending any money. They need to clip coupons. They're not doing that. They're clearly not saving. Look, the debt to income ratio in this country right now is 1.2. That means Americans, on average, owe a dollar twenty in debt for every dollar they have coming in in personal income. That is not a good ratio to have because they just just cannot save. So when you start looking at the future, people are not going to be spending money. That's going to impact earnings here at the markets. And indeed, we do have earnings uh, coming up. But before that, I do want to shift our focus on over to the Eurozone. Every day we get new developments out from the region. But do you think a lot of the uh, debt crisis uh, jitters that we're seeing will be contained to that region? No, definitely not. Look, the Eurozone is a mess. There's no doubt about it. You can tell me that, first of all, Greece, if they default, let them default. But here's the problem. It's going to be catastrophic if they do default. So then you start giving them money. These are not loans. These are actually give me handouts to, the, to, to Greece, to the parliament there. And look, they're not going to be able to repay anybody. So that money is going to be evaporated. The debt concerns are clearly spreading. Italy, Spain, Portugal, and who knows where else. Look, France alone has a debt right now to their GDP of 7%. Yet you have Sarkozy coming out saying, oh, we're going to get down to 2.5% by 2013. It's impossible. They're not going to be able to do it only because of all the entitlements that were already in place that have been in place for decades. They're going to continue to be in place. Look, you can talk all about austerity measures as you want, but you need to implement austerity measures. And you have to get everybody behind it and you're not there and then here in the u.s we're talking about a quantitative easing package a third round that's a slippery slope because now all of a sudden you didn't fulfill the objectives of qe1 and qe2 now we go to qe3 when's that gonna end so here in the u.s we have trouble in the eurozone you have big trouble it is not just isolated there i know timmy geithner is telling everybody that it is but it's not it impacts the entire globe Todd, you've uh, hinted at the broader issues that are affecting both uh, the EU as well as the U.S. So where are the opportunities right now? Well, look, I think you got to, if you want to buy stocks, you got to look at dividend plays right now. Public storage is one of my favorites. You got a dividend yield right now. It's over 3%. It's an all cash business. They have very low overhead, zero debt, which is always good. But plus, you have to think about everybody that's losing their homes. They're not going to sell the dining room set on Craigslist, so they got to put it somewhere. They put in these storage facilities. Public storage is a big beneficiary of that. The stock's doing great this year, and for obvious reasons, everybody's putting their junk in these storage units. That Family Dollar is another big winner. They're opening 650 stores this year. They're adding 2,000 people to their pay. Roll. Another one, we live in a frugal world. That's another uh, stock to look at. I mean, you got a dividend yield of 1.4% right now. That's decent if you look at that. So you, you got to think about the companies that are actually going to be a part of our times now or part of our current economic times. Those are companies I would be focusing on. Okay, Todd, Todd last but not least, before we wrap it up, uh, earnings season is up ahead. So what do you expect to see? Anemic, that's what I would call it, it is, not, is going to be anemic at best. Look, people are not spending any money. You have historical average, 62% of S&P 500 companies tend to beat the bottom line Wall Street estimate right now. We've been running at 80% over the last year. That number's coming down. Look, you just you heard it from Cisco. They're coming out with single-digit revenue growth. You have Bank of America problems. All the multinationals are in trouble. McDonald's alone, 40% of their revenues come over from the Eurozone. And you hear about all the problems every day about the Eurozone. Where are the revenues? Where are the earnings coming from? That's going to impact stocks. I am not thinking this earnings season is going to be great. Look, we are in a critical, critical position right now in the United States, obviously globally, but especially here in this country. We got to get our acts together. We got to get these jobs started. Hopefully this jobs plan will be the kicker. I personally don't think so, but hopefully something will happen. But we need that to help earnings into the future. Okay, Ted, as always, thank you very much for weighing in on all these topics and thanks for your time. All right. Thank you, Remy.